Hey, Joe, I want to go out to eat tonight. I don't like going out to eat. Going out to eat on keto is such a pain in the neck. Like you have to find the right place that's gonna give you the good keto options. It's expensive and everybody judges you. Let's talk about it. Hey, what's up family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, Two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos, we do product reviews, we talk about various keto topics, and then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us on different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com. That's where you're gonna find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. So I really am not a big fan of going out to eat. First of all, I like to eat in private because that's the thing from when I was heavy. Like I never wanted anybody to be watching me eat. I'm an ugly eater. <laughs> so there's some things like chicken wings that I don't want to eat in public because I eat ugly. Well, here's my real problem. When I go out to eat on keto, you have to find restaurants that are keto friendly because so many of them have things that you really can't eat on keto. Or then I always have an issue with, you know, like buying something that I can't eat. Like I've got to pay for the side of French fries or rice, but I can't eat it. So now I feel like I'm wasting my money. And then I feel like people are always judging me. So I hate going out to eat. There are a lot of pros and cons to eating though, because the pro is it's in leisure activity. It's something that we use to celebrate milestones in life. Sometimes we want to go out to eat just because I don't have to cook and we can have a nice dinner. Sometimes I can't rest or relax unless we get out of the house because that's where all the work is and I need to kind of switch gears. So, I mean, there's a pro to eating out. I guess you make some points, but I still have a problem with it. So let's talk about some of the different challenges that you experience when we go out to eat. I mean, I listed a few, like people judge you and you know, you it can be expensive because you're not getting a big plate of food compared to before. And then when you wanna make up for that, you gotta pay a surcharge, cause like, hey, I want vegetables instead of potatoes or that kind of thing. I like how, you know, we say keto friendly restaurants because there are a lot of, you know, restaurants where friendly is as good as it gets because it's 5% things that I can eat, 95% things that I can't eat, and I'm just searching for those that 5%. You know, furiously, I'm on Yelp all the way to the restaurant going exactly what can I eat, and I'm starting to, to decide, you know, this on the side and that without a bun, and you know, you're just kind of making it friendly. It's not a real good friend, it's an acquaintance restaurant. <laughs> But there are places that you can go that are more than just keto friendly. They're like, they're close to a keto restaurant and maybe, you know, there's a few things that you can't eat. I feel like that is probably a better plan. And we sort of um, found out that we could make that strategy our practice when Chris and Miriam from Keto Chow came to visit us because we were trying to pick restaurants where we could go to eat and we were all keto minded instead of the normal plan where you and your spouse are going out with maybe somebody who is not keto. Right. So you're trying to find something that everyone will like, assuming that they won't like things that are keto, which I honestly have never met anybody that's like, no, I don't like bacon. No, <laughs> I don't want to go out and have ribs. I don't want to have a steak. Um, but usually we're trying to find a restaurant like a Mexican restaurant or Chinese food or Italian. And, and it's really, really challenging. Whereas when we went out with other keto friends, we went to a place that was largely meat eater heaven. Yeah. Let us know down in the comment section, what are some of your favorite places to go out to eat? What kinds of foods do you have? Because we're going to talk about some strategies for going out to eat. And I'm going to say, the first strategy, the number one tip I would say is when you're picking a restaurant, pick a restaurant like we're talking about that is mostly keto food. One of my problems is like when people will ask me like, where do you want to go out to eat? And I'll say, listen, I can go out anywhere, but I would prefer to not go for Italian, Mexican, 
or Chinese. Yeah. The reason being is a majority of the meals that you're going to get in those restaurants are not keto friendly. No, you can always get like, you're going to go to a Mexican restaurant and maybe you can get fajitas, but the, all of the sides and the things that they bring to the table are going to be things that you're going to have to pass on, like the rice, like the beans, like the tortilla chips that are served with the salsa. Yes, you can get guacamole, sour cream, cheese, that kind of thing, but there's going to be a lot of stuff on your plate that they serve as part of the entree that you're going to have to do without. And what's left behind is a half empty plate that really just makes you feel like you're being deprived yeah. in my opinion because i know for me pre-keto one of my favorite places for a grab and go was to go to chipotle like anthony and i used to love going to chipotle now can i make chipotle keto absolutely but here's the problem the bulk of the meal that you're going to get when you go to chipotle for that six dollars and 95 cents or seven dollars and 95 cents is rice and beans now when I go there, I have to tell them, okay, I want some lettuce, and some people don't even want lettuce. But then, okay, I'm gonna have my meat, so it's a very small portion, so to make up for it so I can feel full, right. I gotta get a double or a triple portion of meat, so now I'm upcharging it. Then I gotta add guacamole, which is an upcharge. Some of them upcharge you when you ask for extra cheese or extra sour cream. And now my $6.95 bowl is $10, $11, $12, and I still have less food than I had before. And it's things that we're used to, right? Like I, my go-to place would be like an Olive Garden or a Chinese restaurant. And you know, at Olive Garden, I'm going to maybe find an entree, but I'm gonna to have to go without the breadsticks. I'm gonna to have to have that like awkward pause while everybody's enjoying the group salad. And you just feel sad. And it's the same thing at a Chinese restaurant. I used to love P.F. Chang's, but now I don't, I'm not able to get the, the sweet sauce food, not able to have the rice, not able to have egg rolls. And so you're just sitting there frustrated like you're deprived. And now I have paid a premium price to go out of my house and feel bad about myself and feel like I spent a bunch of money and didn't get much for it. Right. So what would be the alternative to picking someplace like that where you have to go through the menu and find the one or two items that you can eat? Like, I hope there's something there. I hope there's something there. We found that the better alternative is to find a largely meat focused place like um, a Brazilian steakhouse where they're going to be bringing you a ton of different types of meats where you are going to feel like it's the king's ransom or a buy the pound um, barbecue place where you can order a la carte anyway mm -hmm. get whatever you would like and not feel like you are deprived because the sides truly are a sides they're not the main focus right so we recently, when Chris and Miriam were here, we went out to um, Texas State Brazil. And what we found was most of the menu there is actually keto friendly. There's just a few things you can't have. So what does that do? That makes it so you don't feel like you're sacrificing because I know personally for me, if I go to some place like a Mexican restaurant where there's only one or two things out of a menu of 30 or 40 things that I can eat, if everybody's sitting there eating the rice and the beans and I'm starting to feel a little deprived. Well, I really wish I can have that. Or maybe I miss that. I mean, before keto, we were talking with people, like one of my favorite fast food places to go was Five Guys. Now, can you make Five Guys keto? Absolutely. Yeah, they make great burgers. But for me, the thing that I loved about Five Guys was their Cajun French fries. So what I've had to do with my own personal journey is I don't go to Five Guys anymore. Why? Because when I go there, all I can think about is I loved those fries. So instead, I found other places to go to. Maybe find a burger place that sells their burgers a la carte. You may pay a dollar or two more, but you're usually getting a better quality burger and you don't have to worry about like 
hey, I'm spending $6 and it came with fries, but I can't even have the fries. Well, and there may be a lot of people who are just discovering Five Guys and don't have a history with them like you do. So for them, it would be like, this is a great find. But for you, because you already had um, a relationship with Five Guys, all you can think about is what you can't have anymore. So maybe there's some other places for you, like we used to go all the time to places like Applebee's, Ruby Tuesdays, Chili's, even Smoky Bones, and we don't go there anymore just because we had a relationship with those you know, foods that they serve there. Could we find something that's keto or keto friendly? Absolutely, but if you have a history with some place, you may be, um, more likely to reminisce on what you used to get to have and then you're going to feel deprived. Make some new restaurants that you've never been to before. Certainly before keto, we may have gone to Buffalo Wild Wings maybe once or twice. Now it's a staple of our restaurant Rolodex because I can go there no matter who I'm with, get like 15, 20 chicken wings, I'm never gonna feel deprived when I go there. Yeah, so tip number one is change the type of restaurant you go to. Tip number two involves what you're going to order. Like worrying about like what kind of things are gonna be on the plate, like what are the sauces made with? And there, I would say, do your research ahead of time. Yeah, you don't wanna wait until you're at the restaurant and everybody's ordering for you to be scrutinizing the menu. Don't be afraid also to call ahead and get some clarifications on things. So one of the places that um, I had contacted when Chris and Miriam were coming down, we, we didn't end up eating there this time, but in the future I think we will be eating there, was an all you can eat meat place. It was called Catfish Dewey's. It's just a local spot that's been around for a really long time. And I remembered that they had all you could eat ribs one night. I remember they had all you could eat catfish one night. And so I called the restaurant and said, hey, is there a way that I can participate in the all you can eat ribs option without any barbecue sauce? They were more than happy to say, yeah, you can get just the meat. Well, wow, all you can eat ribs for $14 Per person, I can't even make that at home. So now it becomes a really great option for us. The other thing um, I asked was, could you make the all you could eat uh, catfish not breaded? Mm -hmm. They said, absolutely. We can do a whole catfish and just fry that. Don't worry about the breading. So of course, you know, you're going to scrutinize the, the oils and stuff for, for us personally, but it was just nice to know if I called and had all of these questions, I could get them answered before we got to the table. Yeah. So tip number three, don't be afraid to ask the waiter or waitresses for a substitution. Ask questions, ask things like, is there sugar in the sauce? Is there breading on this kind of stuff? And you know what? You can even go so far as saying to them like, listen, I have a gluten allergy. You're not lying. Like we're on keto. We can't have gluten. Gluten is going to send you down a rabbit hole. It's going to cause inflammation. So you can tell them like, I cannot have gluten. It would not be good for my diet. You can tell them I cannot have sugar. I really need to know. But if you ask them most of the time, they're going to be okay. And they'll even say like, Hey, let me go check with the chef. And if nobody has an answer, pick something else. Absolutely. And remember that this is a dining you know, option that they understand that they're there to serve you and they want your business, especially now more than ever, you know, people can be very choosy. There's lots of options out there. So when you're at the restaurant, as long as you're using good manners and, you know, treating them with respect, they won't mind making accommodations for you. They plan for that. So one of the happy accidents that, that we found out about what, as a substitution was a loaded broccoli. And yes. boy, we love that. So we went to Texas, not Texas, de Brazil, Texas Roadhouse. And we ask instead of the two sides, that's usually very carb heavy, could we have um, a double portion of broccoli, but we wanted it to be loaded, like if as if we were getting the loaded baked potato that normally came with that meal. So we said, could you add bacon to it? Could you add cheese to it? Could you add sour cream to it? Could you add butter to it? And could you put it on a separate plate? It was delicious and I never would have tried that before 
if I, you know, wasn't willing to ask for any substitutions. And along with that, if you're going to a restaurant like a Texas Roadhouse that traditionally brings out bread, as you're sitting down, tell the host or hostess, hey, don't even bring the bread to the table. I don't want it. You're just gonna end up having to throw it out anyway. So do me a favor, don't bring it. What does that do? First of all, it saves the restaurant a little bit of money. It does. You don't have to worry about it. And now it's not on your table to tempt you. Exactly, because you don't wanna, again, be trying to rationalize or make negotiations with yourself when you're sitting down to eat and you're hungry. You'll yeah. make bad choices. Yeah. So let us know down in the comment section if there's any other tips that you would have for going out to eat. Maybe strategies when you're looking at the menu, strategies of how to talk to the waiter or waitress, or maybe some different keto-friendly restaurants that you know that maybe that we don't know about. But I would suggest absolutely making a list of the places and when you have friends that wanna go out to eat and they say, hey, well, let's go to an Italian restaurant, which is almost impossible to make keto, right. suggest one of these other places and have a list of go-to places. Okay, so now that we have a strategy for eating out, can we actually go and eat out? Okay, since we know exactly how we're gonna pick out the choice and we know what we're gonna do when we're looking at the menu, let's go to Texas Roadhouse. Yes, prime rib for the win. <laughs> That's gonna be our video for today. Please do us a favor, hit that like button down below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time, bye. Bye.